So and welcome to another video and today we're going to be checking out the 3D printed mouse hair from Piranha. So if you're not familiar with Piranha's work, he's been taking the common shapes that people love and then printing them in 3D and giving it a bit more customization for lightweight mice. This one here is the G305 modded ultralight 2 shape and today we're going to be taking a proper look at it and giving it a review with all the usual statistics and seeing how it performs. So if you're not familiar with this channel, what it does is it provides you with the data and statistics behind the tools of the gaming industry to give you the competitive edge to outplay your rivals. So the price here, while well, it totally depends on which package you're going to get and which mouse, there's a large range of prices here, so your best bet is to go and speak to at modmouse who creates these on Twitter, or check out his Etsy page as well. I'll put links in the description for all this. Brian has sent me this one out to review, which is cool though, because I know it takes him a long time to make these, so it's good he's given me the chance here to take a look for you lot to show you what they're about. So onto the design and shape, while this is based off the Final Mouse Ultralight 2 Cape Town shape, and we'll compare the dimensions later to see if there's any differences. It's a 3D resin print using an MSLA printer here. And the quality of this print really stands out compared to other 3D prints I've been using. It's very impressive, I thought it would be a little bit weaker, which sometimes 3D prints are, but this resin is certainly very, very nice. It also comes with a magnetic USB charging port on the back here, so you get a USB cable and this clips onto the back of the mouse, no problem whatsoever. The only problem I found here is that due to the location, it's, you can't charge and game these at the same time. Battery ever though is a 550 milliamp battery, so it should last you a few months. This one obviously uses the Logitech G305 internal PCB here. So it's got the Hero 12K sensor, it's got the wireless technology as well that you're familiar with from Logitech, which we've done a lot of tests on. Some of the latency and things we won't be going into on this one, because we've already done that for the G305. It'll be exactly the same for this mouse. It has four small hyperglide skates, one in each corner. And again, we'll do a glide test later to see how these perform. It's got the whole ultralight look here. It's got all the holes in it, which you expect for the ultralight. It's been trimmed out on the base. He's done a lot of work here on the customization to get as much weight out of this as possible. What he has kept stock here for the G305 is the side buttons and scroll wheel. One thing I wanted to mention as well is in the future, he's going to be making custom mice tailored to your hands. He's going to be using a clay model here, which you'll use to get your shape. And then he'll scan that in and create the mouse for you. That's pretty cool. That's coming in the near future. So check out his Twitter for that. So one of the new tests I've added here is the balancing point. A lot of people get, keep asking me this on mice. So today I'm going to do that starting on this mouse. And you can see here that the balance point is slightly to the front of this mouse, just between the side buttons. Comparing this mouse to my hand and my girlfriend's hand, my hand's an 18 by 9 centimeter hand here. And I can finger grip it and claw grip it. But for me personally, I find it a little bit small, the ultralight too. Anyway, and this one is no different to that. In my girlfriend's hand though, which is 16 by 6.5 centimeters, you can see here, this one fits her hand much better and she could also palm grip it if required. So build quality, well for me, this is one of the best made 3D printed mice I've ever seen. It's really, really well made. I did review one many years ago, might be two years now, when he was first trying these out. It was a lot more boxy, it was a lot more of a rougher print and this one is nice and smooth. Uh, the texture's nice on this one. It's like a smooth resin and overall it's very, very good. You can get some side tape for it, which will provide with certain packages as well. If you find it's a little bit slippery or you want to get rid of the holes as well. There's a few things I found with the quality of us being picky. One is the side does flex where the buttons are, which allows me to activate the switch. I think if Piranha here added a little block at the bottom of the base where the top of the shell joins, we could stop that side switch being pressed in. And one of the other ones is on the top of the shell. It's got quite a bit of flex. If you push down really hard again, you have to be excessive here. This is not normal generally unless you've got a really heavy hand and you can activate the left and right mouse buttons as well. So it's not normal, but there is some flex in it. During normal gameplay though, I didn't find any of these issues whatsoever. This is purely just while I'm sitting here pressing and prodding the mouse as you do with all of them. So I don't see this causing any problems while you're gaming, to be honest. But overall, I'm just being very picky. And um, the 3D print though, is really, really good quality and it wouldn't put me off, so. So clicks per second here, well, it does 6.2 clicks per second here, which is a decent score, puts it in the middle of the pack. You could also tweak the actuation here with the screws in the plungers, which is good to see here from Piranha here. It allows you to adjust the pre and post travel on the switch. I do like that function, so you might be able to tweak your clicks per second a little bit more if you wanted to. The button and switch feeling here, well, it's still running this stock on ROMs here, which I'm sure you could change if you asked Piranha here, maybe as one of his other packages. But personally, I prefer a nicer switch to the 10 million Omron. It certainly benefit from having a nicer switch. The side buttons are really good. There's a little post and pre-travel here. It's done a really good job here positioning these into the shell here. There's no issues with it moving forward. In fact, they're probably slightly better than the stock G305, if I was honest. And the scroll wheel itself is a nice G305. I've always been a fan of the G305 scroll wheel. It does have a slight firm press here, 
where there's very little travel in it, so it's sat around top of the switch, and for me that makes it a little bit difficult for me to do like a little bit of travel on the score wheel. But again, that's personal preference. On the fourth gauge meter here for the clicks, the front left comes in with an average of 65 grams of force. Left middle is 126 grams of force. And left rear is 353 grams of force. This to me makes it look pretty stiff here. And as I was saying, they are quite stiff here to click, but I don't hate them. We'll see how they compare against the other switches in a second. The right front has an average of 70 grams of force. The middle right is 110 grams force and the right rear is 219 grams of force this gives the left average press of 181 grams which is a little bit high could be down to the rear but even so it's still at the high end of the switches here and you can tell it when you press it and the right side one is 133 grams of average force here again putting it quite high at the top to be fair again quite stiff now i think it's something to do with the maybe the resin maybe making it a little bit stiff here because if you compare it to something like an ultra light 2 I just have a slightly lighter click, even on a G305 switch. So the side front button comes in an average of 86 grams of force, and the side back comes in with an average of 85 grams of force. are so very close here. These are both middle of the pack here. The scroll wheel press has an average force of 285 grams of force. Again, puts it up at the top with the stiff press here. You can see the original 3D printed shell here as well, which was even stiffer. So it has come down to be more in line with some of the top presses here on the scroll wheel. Standard 24 notch scroll encoder. So on the scales here, which is what people are interested in seeing here, because this is an ultralight shell, what we get here is the weight of this is 58 grams, which makes it 6 grams heavier than the stock ultralight 2, which is 52 grams. The difference here being that this one is now wireless. So that's where the extra weight comes in with the battery. So testing the glide force here, while well, the NSW comes in an average of 20 grams of force, the NFW comes in with an average of 27 grams of force, the RSW comes in an average of 19 grams of force, and the RFW comes in an average of 23 grams of force. So we get the average glide here of 23 grams across the pad, which puts it joint with the stock Ultralight 2, although the stock Ultralight 2 runs stock skates, where the Piranha version here runs hyperglides. So getting to the dimensions here, while the length of this mouse is 117 millimeters long, the width at the rear is 62 millimeters, the middle top is 51 millimeters, the middle middle, including the profile button, is 57 millimeters. The middle bottom is 54 millimeters, and the front is 59 millimeters wide. The height of the rear is 27 millimeters. The height in the middle is 34 millimeters, and the height at the front is 21 millimeters. So comparing this to the stock ultralight, you'll see here there is a couple of millimeters difference here and there in the shapes, and then this is what it's like compared to the rest of the pack. The button width here is 22 millimeters, both left and right. Again, these are thinner than the stock Ultralight 2 ones, and some of the thinnest here compared to the rest of the mice that we've tested. I didn't have any issues with the buttons here for my fingers at all, even at 22 millimeters, so it shouldn't be a problem for most people with a similar size hand to me and fingers. So moving on to the sensor location here, and the sensor from the front of the mouse is 55 millimeters. From the rear, it's 61 millimeters. From the left side, it's 28 millimeters. From the right side, it's 28 millimeters. Comparing this to the ultra light to Cape Town. You'll see they're very similar and comparing it to the rest of the mice here, this is where it sits. One of the good things here is it has the software for the G305. It uses Logitech software here to allow you to rebind keys, set the DPI, things like that. In the Kovac test here, we get an average sum of 99, an average final of 81.5 and an average accuracy of 82.3. What did surprise me here is that this comes close to the top where I played really badly with the Ultralight 2 stock. One of the worst mice I've used so far. And here this one performed pretty well. So maybe the little different millimeters here and there has made a difference. Or maybe I just prefer the sensor location as sensor in the G305. So my conclusion here is overall this is an excellent made 3D printed mouse here. You still have to accept it's 3D printed, although this resin is really, really good to be fair. For me, the clicks were a little bit stiff here, but overall gaming wise and things like that, it didn't cause many problems. Even my clicks per second is reasonable when just trying to use them normally here. I'm not trying to over spam click it. I'm just trying to do what you would normally do in a game here. It glides well as well. It's certainly one of the fastest ones out there. And it's on the solid G305 platform here, which is great wireless as well as a sensor. So overall, a good mouse here from Piranha. Certainly a massive improvement on the one I checked out a long time ago. 
So in the next videos, we've got the Steel Series AROX. We've also got the MP01, which is coming out next. I know people have been asking for that. And we've certainly got a lot of other mice here to review, as well as some other keyboards and stuff. So I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later. Bye-bye.